Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Flock 2022 Shorts Block Program Q&A session. My name is Kirsten, and I'm a part of the programming team this season. Uh, today, we'll have two filmmakers whose films are a part of the Letting Go Short Blocks, uh, and this film block explores the themes of coming of age, death, and spirituality. Uh, to get us started, I'd love to introduce our filmmakers. It's a pleasure to speak with you all today. Uh, I'd like to begin by asking you if you can tell us a little bit about yourself and your film. So if you'd like to introduce yourself, it'd be fantastic. Yeah, so uh, my name is Alessandro Gentile. I'm the co-writer and director of a short film called Lodo. Lodo is a, a supernatural drama about a boy who wants to reconnect with his mom one last time. He, he lost her at a very young age and um, just wants to reconnect with her again. And um, through a series of supernatural events, they actually find their way together. And it's a, it's a very touching kind of a heartfelt film that um, my aunt actually wrote an essay with her, her, uh, her son many years ago. It's called El Alma del Lodo. And um, it was pretty much about a boy who goes to a cemetery and gets haunted by the mud of a cemetery, goes home and all these like supernatural events happen. And um, it just triggered, you know, an inspiration for me to, to actually pursue it. And uh, I partnered with uh, uh, my co-writer and producer, and she's also the actress in the film, Marita de la Torre. And um, we fleshed it out into a script and, and uh, uh, six years later, because that's how long it took <laughs> <laughs> to get this thing put together um, during the worst time ever during the pandemic um, we're like let's let's do this <laughs> and uh, and here we are now we're showcasing having our east uh, east coast uh, premiere at Philadelphia Latino Film Festival which we were so gracious to be a part of thank you Hi, uh, my name is Maria Victoria Ponce. Hi, Philadelphia. Um, coming to you from the San Francisco Bay Area. I'm a native to here, and I am the writer director of Death and Death Ability. And it is um, a short little piece on me wanting to explore um, when I first got my menstruation. Um, well, myself and my sisters, a uh, number of us were unaware of you know, what was going to happen and so forth, because our mother never told us about it. And a couple of us thought that we were dying. So I wanted to write a little piece of a little girl who gets her period and thinks she's dying. Uh, but instead of it being this traumatizing experience as it was for me, um, I wanted for her to like to have fun and for it to be a lighthearted piece. Awesome. I know we kind of touched a little bit on inspirations on intros to your film, but I'd love to hear more about like what really inspires you to like, especially uh, tell the stories in your film at like this current time. Um, yeah, I guess uh, an inspiration was uh, Italian neorealism for me. Um, I'm, a, I'm a grad from UC Santa Barbara and uh, we studied um, uh, mainly film theory there and uh, some production, but mainly film theory. So I just, uh, uh, all the films that I saw from Italian neorealism, um, some of the French greats like Godard, um, I really took those elements and incorporated into this film as a director. Um, I'm a cinematographer by day, that's my day job. So I'm a DP. So I knew right off that I didn't want to, I didn't want to double team both things, both positions and be the guy with the camera and directing. Cause I felt like it would, it would make uh, it would um, it would hurt the project itself. So I kind of just backed off and, and got uh, um, um, my friend, uh, uh, Jeff Dolan, who's a, uh, who, who uh, shot McMillions at Premiere Sundance. And um, he has a film that just, uh, it's called the big con that just premiered at uh, South by Southwest. And uh, he agreed to do it. And we're like, so we both kind of had this conversation to uh, to kind of create something that um, that felt real because he has a really big, big background in documentary filmmaking. And so do I. But also we have those magical elements um, that you'll see in the film that kind of um, more narrative and kind of more structured. But we also didn't want to kind of um, commit to like, OK, we need all this coverage for the scene because sometimes you really don't need all that coverage. Um, but the big scenes, the ones that really are important are the ones that you spend the most time on. 
Um, and so that's, that's, that's kind of mainly what my inspiration came from. And also, like I said, my aunt's short story that sparked everything. Um, and, uh, and then from there, just started building out uh, the story that you guys will watch. Yeah. I don't know if that answers the question. Does that answer the question? <laughs> yeah, Alessandro, I, 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 right away, I noticed how beautifully shot your piece was. And I thought maybe you had also shot it, but, you know, just you going into it just like shows, it's just beautiful, beautiful. I shot 10, I shot 10% of it. <laughs> yes, I shot 10% of it. So I shot the salt and sea, the dream sequence at the oh, salt nice. and sea. And then I shot, which is a very important kind of dream that the mother uh, the mother actually explains to the young boy, the grandmother explains to the young boy and then all the landscape shots in the beginning and uh, the you know the b-roll yeah in texas yeah it was beautiful very thank beautiful. you thank you yeah, yeah. um <laughs> so i i was inspired inspired by a number let me start again i was inspired by a number of things as i spoke about earlier you know I, I write about the community that I grew up in that's a huge part of me and has made me who I am uh, in Richmond, California, uh, primarily my Mexican American community. And so I definitely write from a place of my truth and um, the, the women that have inspired me around me. But I was also inspired by uh, Jane Austen. And I, I kept telling everyone, oh, I'm shooting a period piece. And everyone thought that I was talking about a period piece that takes place in a certain time. And, and then I caught on eventually that that's what they thought I meant. I'm like, no, it's not a period piece. It's a menstruation piece. But then I decided I wanted to play with that and play with Jane Austen. I love how she's been adapted into film. And I watched a number, I've watched probably all of Jane Austen movies that have been adapted. But the a recent one, Emma was a huge inspiration because it's shot also so beautifully in the way they use the colors and production design and wardrobe and so forth. So I really wanted to uh, play with that in my piece. Um, I've never really had a budget for um, a short. And with this, I, I got a, um, a grant through the PBS Latinx uh, experience. And so I was like, yes, I have money. I can do something. I can pro finally, you know, get a production designer that can come in and, you know, help me, you know, with my vision and so forth. So I was definitely very, very inspired by Jane Austen. And so I was also inspired by Wes Anderson because I love a lot of the films that he does. And I love how he plays with, you know, with um, his, his his production design and so forth so that was definitely also an inspiration uh so my next question is um you know each of your films touches upon the concept of death in a very intriguing way obviously like very intentional as well uh i'd love to know like if you could tell us more about why you found it like important to address the subject matter in the matter that you did in your film um i think uh you know before the pandemic you know things are, you know, more, more lighter and light, you know, life was a little, little lighter and a little kind of bubblier. And um, so it made more sense now when we started shooting that, you know, this, this topic, uh, which kind of have a, has a Coco-esque vibe to it. So when Coco came out, I was like, Oh, okay, let's, let's Coco's out. And, um, um, but it has those, um, it was really important for me to actually because I, I grew up very spiritual, like my family was, you know, you know, my mom's from Mexico, she's from Guadalajara, and she's, uh, you know, she was Catholic, but then she became Christian and kind of like what I brought was brought up in that in that world, even though I don't practice it now, but it was really important for me to actually put some of those elements into the film, but I didn't want it to be like a religious film, um, but I did want to touch on on, on spirituality and that there is um, another world there in between the, the, you know, the spirit realm and, and our realm and how that could kind of combine each other. So it's it is really more of a curiosity, really. It's uh, um, just trying to like um, examine just the supernatural and um, because everyone has their stories, um, but also it became more, it became more of a personal piece because in 2020, starting the pandemic, uh, I lost my father-in-law to, to COVID. So that was, uh, um, that just made it all like more, <clears throat> more, um, more meaningful and more deep. 
Um, and he's actually, you know, of course, uh, uh, dedicated to him as well, Luis Frias. And, um, and also an, another, some other, an aunt as well that passed away. So it kind of just like um, brought it all full circle as far as um, touching on the subject matter and trying to examine it, but also um, having to resonate with something very personal and close to you. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can relate to everything that you're saying, um, Alessandro. Um, for me, um, it, I was never intentionally trying to deal with death. Um, but then obviously as the, you know, I got closer and closer to, to shooting the, the project. Um, I, I definitely, when I was a kid, I was extremely fearful of death in my own way, you know, and I was, I had a deep connection to what I felt, you know, the afterlife would look like and so forth, but I was still um, very scared of it, you know, with my little girl, Ceci, her mother has passed on. So she has that connection already to her mother and how she feels that her mother's, you know, in heaven and so forth. And, and so while she does fear death, she also believes that death could potentially mean being with her mother, you know, and so that's why, you know, it's like, she's like, you know what, if I'm going to die, that's a part of this process. Um, but I'm going to go out the way that I want to go out, you know, and, and so it, it became one of those things to where I felt that, you know, she, she just, she, she was going to be okay with it, you know, but then obviously, in the end, you know, we know she doesn't die. And so it's one of those things to where, you know, it's kind of fleeting and, you know, she moves on with her life, you know, because she does have her father still too, you know? Yeah. Thank you so much for that insight. Uh, I'm curious, what do you both think of your films and what do you see as the most crucial aspect of it that you really want audiences to hold on to? I think for me, it's uh, um, <clears throat> just that like, you know, we all we all have a connection to something you know um especially as kids you have a um we're always trying to become that kid right so we're adults and we're all like kind of big kids kind of running around trying to socialize and, and communicate and work with each other and stuff but ultimately we um we always want to go back there right and be real and kind of like you know just on on um um unaltered unlike you know fresh mind you know fun um so i think i think i would like people to kind of like really take that home with them you know watch the film and kind of um have it resonate with uh with a memory or a past memory whether it be good bad uh, surprising or something good that has happened to them you know in the past when you know they were, they were children um and that's kind of ultimately what the film is about, you know, I mean, even though the boy, it's not the most um, uplifting film in the sense that like, you know, the boy lost his mom at a very young age and his grandmother's raising him. But at the same time, it's like uh, he's uh, um, trying to hold on to something like hold on to a spark, which I think every, every human being should, you know, um, whether it's, you know, helping them drive something, you know, that uh, maybe a father or a grandparent said you know to them to to drive them forward and say success uh or to try something different or a teacher that you know maybe influenced you or a mentor um and that's kind of like what I, what I hope the people you know people that watch the film kind of get out of it it's like um don't forget like you know your past you know things that have touched you in your life you know when you were young um because uh it all disappears and then you kind of like you're you're in this kind of like uh you become kind of like a in the ether of life you know you're just kind of like floating around um being the same as other people as opposed to being your original self um so don't you know always listen to those voices you know of, of past and don't forget um you know your experiences and what sculpted you as a person Um, yeah, um, I write and I do my projects for my community. 
And if, um, if other people can relate to it and can be entertained by it, uh, you know, then um, I, I think that's a beautiful thing. And I hope that I can write universal stories. Um, I don't know necessarily that I want anyone to leave, you know, after or, you know, after they watch the film, I, there's nothing that I necessarily think can think about, but I do hope, you know, that um, we can hold on to who we were as kids. Um, I have such a deep connection to those years because they were such um, formidable years that were shaping me. And when we're kids, we were always chasing something and we're always dreaming and so forth. And then you grow up into adulthood and then things kind of like become harder. Um, uh, you know, obviously some children have a harder life than others, you know, but, you know, as we become adults, you know, we lose some of that spark. And with me as a filmmaker um, and do, going through this process, I've been able to like regain a lot of that spark and what it means to like want something so bad that you know you're you not only work hard for it but you're you feel like you're privileged because you can be doing what you're doing um so for me i just hope that people can can take you know um um take something hopeful from it and can um can think about how um, you know, when we're kids, we're always chasing adulthood, but then when we become adults, we're kind of like always trying to go back to those years. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. And that's what, I, that's what I really loved about your film. It was very playful. And I love, you know, breaking the third wall and kind of having this conversation, right? This connection with the little girl. Yeah. And, uh, but like, you know, she kind of takes a moment to speak with us and then she'll, she'll go to the, you know, go to, you know, the narrative. And then, uh, um, but I loved how, you know, how bubbly and kind of playful it was and, uh, and the curiosity of, you know, of, you know, the romance, you know, with the little boy and stuff. Yeah. So that was, it was really cool. Yeah. I really, yeah. I really, uh, I thought you, you really handled it very tactfully. Yeah. Thank you. Good job. That, yeah. that little boy is actually my son. <laughs> oh yeah. Cool. yeah. Cute little kid, and, man. <laughs> yeah. And, and he, he, I had no intention for him to be a part of it, but it was during the pandemic and every, during the, that age range for girls, it's kind of hard because they can be physically, you know, so much, you know, older or younger or, or mentally and emotionally too. Right. And when I found Blanca, all the other boys were so much older, but then I showed my little boy her audition and he looked at me and he's like, mom, I want to audition. And I was completely taken aback because he's not someone that I would think would want to audition. Whoa. And I put him through the process and I did it just like with everyone else. He was in the kitchen. I was in the office and we did it through zoom and he was nervous and I could see he was nervous and I had to talk him through it. And, and, but then I was shocked at how he did in his audition. And then I was shocked at how he did on his performance because he doesn't have any experience but a funny story is the night prior to the kissing scene I woke up in the middle of the night <laughs> saying to myself my I'm about to watch my little boy have his first kiss on screen uh, you know not only in front I'm gonna have to direct him through that but he's going to be doing it on screen with another little girl who's never had her first kiss either and so it was such an emotional experience for me and I just like teared up and I was like oh my gosh this oh, he, is crazy he, he got the pucker down though he got the pucker down <laughs> no did. those lips were like sticking straight out ready to go <laughs> he was ready to he go did. he did and so i have to say that that's probably one of my most memorable moments through the entire pandemic because it was just such a surreal experience cool. yeah. wow that's so wow i love that <laughs> um i guess my final question for you guys is is there anything else that you want audiences to know about you or like even any future projects that you're working on? Is there anything that you're like super excited for in the future? Yeah, so currently I'm um, directing a short film called Della. It's, uh, um, it's about a female boxer who uh, has past demons that she's dealing with family wise and also as a kid trauma. And um, is trying to work through that while she's actually going through the boxing ranks. 
So that's currently right now we're doing uh, we're in pre-production for that. Um, and it's funny because I'm also doing a feature film as a DP. It's called Cuate. It's a, a feature film starring uh, Emilio Rivera, who uh, he just signed for the project. He just wrapped up uh, the Mayans and we're just trying to pin him down for the dates here. But uh, once we get that all lined up, yeah, it's about a, um, a his, Hispanic uh, uh, trainer who uh, trains a black fighter and their relationship as friends, as opposed to like the racial tensions and all that, you know, it's more like about like their friendship. Um, but, you know, the black fighter goes and fights in, you know, he's like training in this uh, uh, Latino environment and, you know, it's, it's very uh, uh, looked, looked down upon and, and there's all, you know, you feel attention, of course, with that in the competition, but it's, uh, it's really his journey to, 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 to uh, um, with, with the trainer and their relationship as friends. So that's currently uh, what I'm working on now. And also uh, as a d documentary DP, I'm doing uh, um, uh, the Richard Duardo documentary with uh, Richard Montoya and Heather Flores. So that's, uh, we're starting that up uh, actually now this weekend. So that's uh, pretty exciting, but he's a pretty, really prolific uh, Chicano artist who uh, influenced a lot of people like Banksy and uh, Shepard Perry and you know, so some of the greats. And uh, um, it really needs to kind of like, you know, be, uh, be iconized because he's uh, he was very talented and influenced a lot of people. So that's currently what's in the works. Yeah. So. That's exciting. I can't wait to see all of those actually. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, that's beautiful. I love that we're getting so much more um, Latinx content in general, you know? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And then we wanted to, we wanted to apply for a Mexican American film festival. We missed the deadline, but maybe next year, hopefully they'll, they'll take us next year. We'll see. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. a really, uh, a really uh, powerful uh, film festival as well. Yeah, so I have a number of projects that I'm currently working on. I'm shooting mm -hmm. a short coming up in July that's called The Girl on the Bus. Um, and that's a proof of concept for my feature length uh, script that I have in development called Washing Elena. Um, and that one has gotten a lot of uh, great support from a number of organizations and so forth. Um, and that follows Indalia um, as she uh, tries to um, come to terms with the loss of her um, best friend who had recently converted to Islam and, mm -hmm. um, and all that lo the, the loss and the guilt and so forth. Uh, Latinos are the largest ethnic group converting to Islam in the United States. And I wanted to um, write a story about two best friends um, because uh, I have a very good friend of mine who converted to Islam many years ago, but only recently had begun wearing the hijab. And when she started to do this, I was bothered. And then I was bothered that I was bothered. I was like, why am I feeling this way? And so um, she sat, uh, we had dinner, she sat across from me and she told me what Islam meant to her and what wearing the hijab meant to her and so it was definitely one of those moments for me to learn and to grow and so yeah I wanted to tell a story of two Mexican Americans growing up in Richmond and what happens when one converts to Islam. Um, I also have a uh, coming of age um, comedy called Hell Aquanet and um, that one's also in development and I'm hoping to shoot that next year and I'm very excited about it because it speaks about everything that I love about my community and it's about laughter and music and fun and it takes place in a panaderia and so it's just a project that you know um, is very grounded in my community and it's kind of a mix of like uh, Bended Like Beckham and uh, Friday you know and so it's just it's just a lot of fun it's a fun project. I'm so excited to watch all of these films when they're finally <laughs> fully produced. <laughs> thank you. All right. Well, that's all the questions I have for today, but thank you everyone for joining us and make sure you stay tuned for Q&A panels that are continually posted throughout the festival and other future events as we prepare for FLAF 2022, which is from May 29th to June 5th. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank thank you, you. Philadelphia. <laughs> thank you, Philadelphia.